Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. Welcome to Chord Creativity. We're going to keep going with all of our chord discussions here. And so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about taking some open chords and trying to figure out how to make them a little more interesting when you play guitar. And this all kind of ties in on Wednesday. We're going to be talking about power chord creativity, which is really just celebrating my guitar course, Power Chord Creativity, which you can check out by going to guitarzoom.com. So let's see what we got here. Robert is here. Felix is here. Dennis is here. Ricky is here. Awesome. Paul is here from New York. Andreas is here. Carrie is here. Ian is here. Great. Looks like we're doing good here. We're going to waste very little time here. We're just going to get started. I'm going to try and give you some things to think about about as we, we do this. So again, if you don't know me, my name is Steve Stein. I create content, guitar content, and try to motivate people to continue trying to play guitar. Sometimes we get frustrated and don't really feel like playing or things come up, and it's very important for us to just continue our journey here. So what I want to do today is I want to talk about open chords and trying to become a little more interesting with those open chords. So maybe you've just been playing for a little while and you've learned how to play a G and a D and a C or something like that, and you're ready to start moving into something and making your music sound a little more authentic. I want to give you some ideas here of some different things that you can think about. Let's just start off by thinking about chord creativity. That's what we're talking about today. And if you want to check out the course, what you can do is head over to guitarzoom.com. I'm sure there'll be a link somewhere in the chat you can check out as well. I would sure appreciate that. But the most important thing here is learning how to play chords effectively, cleanly, quickly, that sort of thing, which if you've watched some of the other live sessions that I've done, these workshops, that's what we've been talking about this entire time. So if you haven't seen those, please do me a favor and go back to some of those and check out those workshops because you can learn a whole lot of stuff from those, okay? But today what we want to do is we want to say, let's, we've learned some chords. What are we going to do with these things? Here's what I want you to start thinking about. One thing that I learned early on, which made no theoretical sense whatsoever, if I was making a chord and I had a finger that I wasn't using on the guitar, I would try and place it somewhere on the guitar to see if I could change the sound of things. And when we change the sounds of chords, of course, oftentimes we change the names of them. Not always, but oftentimes the names will change. Well, we're not really worried about that right now because we're not going down the theory route today. We're just going down a creative route. That's what we're looking for. So let's say you were playing something like a plain old C chord. Okay, so you think about that C chord. And I think, okay, I've got this pinky available and it's not doing anything. So why not figure out where I could put it? So one thing I could do is, for instance, I could place this pinky on the uh, first string on the third fret. Now it's not going to change it dramatically. It's just adding in that sound up on top. Okay? So it's just adding this higher register on top of that chord, but it does sound kind of nice. Okay? Now if I try to put it one fret higher, it's not going to sound as nice in the general sense. Now that's the thing about music is sometimes we come across things and you might go, oh my god, that's an amazing sound, and somebody else is going, oh my god, that's not an amazing sound. We're all different, so it's not my job to tell you what you should or shouldn't like. I just want you to enjoy what you're doing. So if we take that C chord, we put this here get that kind of sound. So oftentimes when we're playing chords, what you'll encounter are chords that we call sus chords. These are very common chords that we do. Let me show you this. If I took this D chord right here, just play it traditionally like I always do, but this time again, I'm going to take that pinky and I'm going to set it on the first string, third fret again. I get this new sound. The chord changes and we call this a sus chord, a suspended chord. And what that really just means is Hey, here's the sound of a D chord, and when I add that pinky on, what it's doing is it's suspending the sound. It's making us just wait, and we're just waiting for the resolve of this to go back. So if you listen to that sus chord that I'm doing right there, you see that? And it resolves all nice, comes back. 
Okay? Well, if we like that, what we could do is take the, the middle finger and we could take that off the guitar and then put it back down and we would get that song. Adding the pinky, which we call a sus four. And again, don't get stressed about the name of it, just enjoy it. See how it comes back down and it resolves itself back to that D? Well, if we take the middle finger off the guitar and set that down, when we take it off the guitar, we call that a sus two. And a sus two has a lower sound and a sus four has a higher sound. So we could add those two things together. And all of a sudden what happens is when you're writing, for instance, when a person is writing a song, sometimes if you're sitting on the chord too long, especially if you're a guitar player and you have a guitar player brain, when you're sitting on a chord too long, you tell yourself, well, I got to go somewhere. Like I can't just sit here forever. I got to do something else. So that's when we start trying to, you know, we're changing chords all over the place and doing this. And again, maybe that'll work out perfect for you. But sometimes we don't have to do that. Sometimes what we could do is we could just stay on that chord but creatively embellish what we're doing on that chord instead of leaving. And of course you could change up this rhythm to anything you want. Okay, so that's an instance where we could take a chord and we could both add a note or add a finger and we could remove a finger in two different kinds of sounds. And we could do this all over the place. We go back to our C chord there. If I take this first finger off the guitar, it really does change the sound quite a lot. You see? Now it's becoming something else. We call that a C major 7, and it doesn't really matter what it's called at this point. Again, that's not where our discussion is going. But just understand that if you were playing and you like that sound, you see, instead of adding a finger, we're taking a finger off or we're getting a new kind of sound. Okay? If we took this C chord, and again, you're going to be able to watch this later. So if I'm going a little fast with some of this information, you can watch this later. Or you can check out the courses that I have available, like Power Chord Creativity, some of those things that we've got over at guitarzoom.com. But let's try this. We've got our C chord here. I'm going to take this middle finger and I'm going to take it off the guitar. And when I do that, I create a sus2, but on the C chord. So it's the same kind of idea, which means I could then take my pinky and add it on the third fret of the fourth string. Again, I'm getting that same kind of motion that I did on the D chord. So if you've never explored things like sus chords or add chords, different kinds of things like that, and I'm going to show you all kinds of different things here. But if you've never explored those kinds of sounds and you've been playing guitar for a little while and you've developed some of your basic chords like G and D and A, E minor, that sort of thing, this is a great place to go to just start learning how to make things sound a little more interesting, a little more creative when you play. We can do this with all kinds of chords. The next thing I want to show you, though, is if you remember a while back in one of the workshops, I was talking about pivot points. And pivot points are where you leave a finger on the guitar. Maybe you're moving from a four-finger G, and you're heading over to a D, and you leave that third finger in place, and you pivot on that third finger. Well, a super cool creative thing that you can do with chords is to leave some fingers down intentionally to get a particular kind of sound. So let's say, for instance, I was playing a G, and I want to go to C, but instead of going over to this C like this, which sounds completely different, and that's not bad, it just does, what I might do is stay on this G chord, and when I want to go to C, I'm just going to take these two fingers right here, and I'm going to move them down one string, like this. You see? So it's half of a C chord and kind of half of a G chord. But what happens is you have this consistent tonality, this higher register of that sound. Now, if you listen to any 80s music, this sort of reminds you of all kinds of different 80s ballads. You know, all 
that kind of stuff. Every rose has its thorn. All those things use this. Okay, so it's a very common way of moving between G and C is just leaving these two fingers down on the third fret of the first and second strings and just dropping those two fingers down. Now, would we call that a C chord? Well, sort of. Technically, we would call it a C add nine chord. And again, I don't want you to, the, the names of these things to weird you out. I just want you to look for some different things that are kind of fun and um, interesting to play. That's the most important thing that we're dealing with here. So as we go from G, we move down to the C. Let's say we wanted to go to an E minor. Well, I might leave these two fingers here and move to this E minor, which means I'm taking these two fingers, going to the E minor. And again, I'm getting this really creative kind of sound. And although all of these chords have specific names, the most important thing is, is that you're hearing how the chords have this consistency of sound on the top three strings. Now when I go to D, I could leave it there, but I could do something really cool and I could go back, right, because this is a sus chord now on the D like we talked about. And I could maybe go there and resolve it like that because it still doesn't feel like I'm home until I go back to the G. So I could get something like this. You know, all that kind of stuff. So we're leaving some fingers down intentionally to get a particular kind of sound. sound a bit similar to something like Green Day. You've ever heard that sort of thing before. So these are things that we use a lot in our playing. Now another thing I want to show you that I would love for you to work on, and I do talk about in all kinds of stuff like this in Power Chord Creativity, which is a course that you can check out if you go to GuitarZoom.com. Just go there and it'll be somewhere on the page there. You can check that out. But what I love to do is I love to take my chords and I love to move them around. This is something that I learned how to do there's all kinds of different examples. For instance, if I was playing, um, right, stuff like Rush, or if I was playing, okay, what we do is we're taking bar chords at this point, we're splitting away part of the bar chord to get another unique kind of creative sound. So if we were looking at something like Rooster, for instance, by Alice in Chains, I'm playing an F-sharp major bar chord, and then I'm taking the bar off the guitar. And it's creating this really unique kind of sound. And if I move up to A, I could do the same thing. And get that as well. So. So there's lots of different ways that we do something like that where maybe we leave part of the bar chord off. For instance, I might go up to B here, and instead of playing the entire bar chord of a B, all I'm doing is playing the top, almost like a power chord. I'm playing, but I'm adding in this note on the third string, so I'm playing 7, 9, 9, 8. But then I'm leaving these two strings open, which is again creating this consistency as I move chords. Watch this. So if I play... So there I'm taking a B major, an A major, and a G major bar chord, but instead of barring, I'm leaving the bottom half off, and I'm getting this consistent open string sound over all three of those, and it sounds really, really cool. So there's a lot of things like that that you can do to get more creative with your chords too. You might take the bar chord off or only use part of your chord from the bar chord idea. Instead of barring the entire thing, you're leaving part of that open, which sounds really cool. Let's make sure we are good here. Okay, looks like everybody's good. Let's see what Edward says here. He says, it's funny that I've done, I've done that for years and never gave it any real thought. It just sounded right and it worked for a piece I was working with according to my ear. That's exactly right, Edward. That's the whole point. 
is that today what we're not talking about is trying to tie it into logic and tie it into theory. That's a whole other conversation. What we want to do is just look at some ideas of things that you could do to get more creative. Okay? So we've got open chords and how we can add fingers or subtract fingers off the guitar to create different kinds of sounds. And when we're done with this, again, you can check out a, a number of my guitar courses, whether it's chord mastery or power chord a creativity or different things like that, where we talk about all of these different kinds of um, chordal embellishments, making chords more interesting. And on Wednesday, two days from now, we're going to be talking about power chord creativity. So instead of playing standard power chords, we're going to find some ways that to make them sound a bit more modern and unique. We're going to do some things like that as well. But for today, let's just keep going here. So we've got our open chords, adding or subtracting fingers on those. We've got bar chords where we're actually eliminating the bar, which makes some really nice sounds. And then we've got what we can call a half bar, where we're really not barring at all. We're taking that bar off to get this kind of ethereal open chord. Kind of sound. Now, if we take what, what I'm doing right now and we expand it just a little bit more, let's say I'm not going to use a bar at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, if you understand bar chords, you understand what a bar chord really is, is an open chord that you're moving up the guitar, but you've added your first finger as a bar, right? Like a capo, like a built-in capo is really what you're doing. Let's eliminate the bar entirely. Let's watch this. If I just took this E chord, and let's say I took that E chord and I moved it up to the seventh fret here with these two fingers, sixth fret with my first finger. So I'm just playing an E major chord, but I'm moving it up. And then I move it up two frets higher. And I can get sounds like that. Now, in theory, in the logistical side of, of things, I'm really playing an E and an A and a B chord, although the voicing is a bit different. But I've got this consistency happening around it. And I remember the first time I started learning songs that did things like this, and I was just blown away at the fact that I could take open chords that I've played a billion times and I could start moving them around. Now, you have to move it around and decide what sounds good to you, and it depends on what kind of music you're trying to play or what vibe you're looking for in a song or something like that. You know, if I went up and I did something like this... Some of you might even notice something like that, right? It sounds a little bit more dark. It doesn't sound as nice and floaty as this one did. But it doesn't matter. It's just what you're looking for, what sounds interesting to you. So when I play this... Move down. Let's try and move down again. So a lot of really great sounds that you can get by just moving that E chord around the guitar. Now, there's all kinds of these. Like one I used to love to play, which again, you might recognize this song if I went. Or this. Right? Some of you might know what that is. So all I'm doing is taking the D chord and I'm moving it up and down the guitar in different places. And there's lots of songs that do these sorts of things. See, I can still get those same kind of sounds that I did on E, but just doing it on a D chord instead. So there's some really great stuff like that that you can explore as well, just getting more creative on wholehearted, uh, Strat Dad said, you're absolutely right. So just learning how to move these things around and get some more interesting stuff. Barbara says, you doing Bauhaus with the dark thing. That's true. I mean, you do get those kind of sounds, don't you? So my point is, is that it doesn't really matter. Like if we always come from a logistical side, a theoretical side, then what we do when we think about being creative is that we think that, now again, don't get me wrong, I, in saying this, 
I love theory and I use theory a lot. What I'm saying is there's a time for theory and there's a time just to be creative. And sometimes they'll overlap each other and sometimes they won't. But if we come from the theory side all the time, oftentimes what it tells us is we're not supposed to do that because it doesn't make sense in the key or harmonically it doesn't make sense. There's all kinds of things like that where when we're just coming from the creative place, we're not really concerned with things are right or wrong. We're just concerned with how they sound, how they make us feel. And that's something that we don't find a lot. If you're playing like G and D and C, it's always going to sound the same. But if you start exploring some different kinds of sounds, you're going to be surprised at what kind of stuff you can come up with. So, for instance, a C chord's a great example. Like, sometimes I'll take a C chord and I'll move it up. Like, if I take C and move it up a whole step, logically, I'd have a D chord. If you were on a piano and you moved up, I'd have a D chord. Well, if I move it up, some of the notes are moving up because I'm pressing on them. Some of them are not moving up. Different things like that that I think just sound great. So there's a song that I wrote a long time ago with Steve Grimmett. We had a band called Grimstein. Steve Grimmett from Grim Reaper, if you know who he is. And I needed a D and an, uh, an A chord. But instead of going from D to A, what I decided to do was play my D, which was C two frets higher. And when I went to A, instead of going to a typical A, I went to the A bar chord without the first finger. Just because it made the chord sound a bit more complex, maybe. Maybe that's a good word. And they both still have this open first string, what kind of ties it together, right? Just lots of really fun stuff that you can do with chords if you just stop thinking about just playing them exactly the way they are. Okay? So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Let's see here. Do you know of an easy way of a G minor 7 to play with hammer-ons without muting the strings? Well, G minor 7 I normally would play like if you're, th you're thinking long train running. I'd normally play it like that. For that, I'm avoiding the top string in the first and sixth strings. And I'm playing a G minor 7. And I'm hammering, and there really isn't any other way to do that. I mean, if you were doing something similar to Long Train Running, that's exactly how I would do it. And again, it's movable. To whatever you want to do. But these are really great things for you to try and practice. So hopefully that makes sense to you. What I'd love for you to do is practice this a little bit. Do me a favor, head over to guitarzoom.com and check out Power Chord Creativity and see if some of that stuff is something you might be interested in. Most importantly, make sure that you keep practicing. And remember, when you sit down to practice, you should focus on fundamentals, no doubt about it. Sit down, focus on things that you know need more work, but always remember to take a little time out of your day to focus on creativity. Don't just focus on like matter of fact things, which you need to do. Again, I'm not downplaying that. It's very important. You can't play if you don't know how to play your chords and move them quickly and all that sort of thing. But once you've got that, always try and take a little time with some of the things that you're working on and try and spend that time finding unique ways of making it sound like music. We've talked about rhythm in some of the workshops. We talked about dynamics and all these different things. Try and make your rhythm sound more authentic. Well, now you've got an opportunity to take these chords and start doing something interesting with those as well. So it's not just the job of the strumming hand, but also the fretting hand, the chording hand, to start doing some things that make it sound a little more interesting. Okay, now I'm gonna wrap this up, but remember, you might do some picking. You see, and then all of a sudden I'm using all of this stuff. I'm using the sus chords I was talking about, different things like that. But of course, you have to have the skill of being able to do some picking as well versus strumming, but just different things for you to think about. So hopefully that helps you. Everybody stay positive. Uh, remember to join me on Wednesday, same time, same bat time, same bat channel, and uh, we're going to be doing power chord creativity. So we're going to be diving in and looking at some of the power chord ideas that you can use as well. So everybody take care, stay positive.
next time on the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to step right into power chord creativity. Now, for me, once I learned how to play power chords and I got them to sound fairly tight, which is what we talked about in the, a couple of times ago, a couple of live sessions ago. And again, if you want to check these out, you can always head over to YouTube, either my uh, Steve Stein channel or the Guitar Zoom channel. There will be a playlist there that you can check out um, all of these different live workshops that I've been doing. Okay? So, and, you know, if you haven't subscribed or anything, please do me that. Uh, it helps me out enormously if you do those sorts of things, share them, that sort of thing. But anyway, so when it comes to power chords, the most important thing was being able to play them tight, making sure that your guitar is really in tune. And being able to tighten everything up when you play, whether it's the movements like we talked about last time, whether you're sliding, whether you're picking. or you're using an intentional kind of slide. So keeping those chords tight, that's the most important thing. Right? So now what we want to do is we want to think about, okay, so once we've got that kind of accomplished, the next thing to do is to start trying to figure out how to get more creative with these chords. So what I want to do is I want to show you a few things to think about. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a power chord. Now, generally what we do when we play a power chord is we use either two strings or three strings, right? So when you play a, a G power chord on the sixth string, you're either using two fingers, right, on the sixth and the fifth strings, or you're using three fingers with your pinky on the fourth string as well. And either way is perfectly fine. I interchange these like I don't, I don't ever think oh, well, I should just use two fingers or use three fingers or something like that when I'm playing power chords. I just play whatever's comfortable. And it, it very much depends on where I'm coming from or where I'm going to, how fast the song is. All those kinds of things would really make a bigger difference on whether or not I would use a two-finger power chord versus a three-finger. But one thing that I do use that... May, again, and none of this stuff you have to do. I'm just giving you some opportunities of things to think about. But oftentimes when I play power chords, I'll tend to play them with two fingers, and I'll use my first and my pinky instead of my first and my third. Okay? Now, the reason I'll do that is because sometimes, oftentimes, I'll do things where... where I'll switch the bass note and I'll move it down. Okay? So I want you to see this. This is going to be our first little chord creativity. So if I went to the fifth string, seventh fret, the E chord, and let's say I wanted to drop that bass note down, drop it down again, drop it down again, you see I get some really cool sounds by expanding that. We're going to touch on these as we keep going in some different ways of thinking about this. If you enjoyed today's podcast and want to learn guitar even faster, go to guitarzoom.com and click the Get Started button to get access to courses that are right for your interest and skill level. Again, go to guitarzoom.com and click the Get Started button.